what is mathematics? A short introduction of mathematics. Or mathematics based short introduction. He talked about mathematicians and he said that the word genius is overused and uh, most people who are called geniuses are not. For example, Andrew Wise is definitely not a genius. He's very, very clever. He's not a genius. But I'm sure that Timothy Gardner make one exception to his role. A true genius, and in fact it's proven in a beautiful book, the biography uh, uh, by Siobhan uh, Robert, right? Yes. Uh, that I strongly recommend that it's called genius, and in this case it is right. So, uh, John Conway is the one and only. Well, I don't really agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> not false modesty. <laughs> Not modest at all, actually. <laughs> Never mind. Um, yes, okay. So, the thing that I call the Foul Harbor Triangle, I'm not sure was ever actually written as a triangle by Foul Harbor. Foul Harbor was a very interesting man, Johannes Foul Harbor. He was a good mathematician. He was in the days when there weren't very many mathematicians, however, so nobody knows him. <coughs> he was. Uh, he lived in Ulm. He was called the great arithmetician of Ulm. There's another person much more famous came from Ulm, and that is, anybody knows? Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein, yes. Um, anyway, uh, Descartes once visited Foul Harbor. This gives you an impression of how good Foul Harbor was, so to speak. He, uh, Descartes once visited him, intended to stay a week, and stayed a month. Mm -hmm. um, uh, anyway, okay. So, um, let's um, we stand up. That's the chalk, yes. So, um, I'm going to write out what I call the Foul Harbor Triangle. But I'm going to do it by asking questions. The person who answers one of them should not answer any more if there is somebody else answering, so to speak. What, uh, oh, I'm going to use x, little x, as an integer variable. It's a bit uncommon, but I think you'll see why. What is 1 plus 2 plus dot 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 plus x? Come on, somebody! x squared plus x all over 2? Yes. That's very nice. <laughs> Most people say x times x plus 1. <laughs> In fact, uh, I want it to be given as a polynomial in descending powers of x. Um, and there's only one thing that, only one way in which you don't, you won't um, achieve full marks for that way of saying it, because you said x squared plus x over 2. All what I want is x squared over 2 plus x over 2. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so here it is. So, um, uh, well, 1 plus 2 plus, plus x is a half x squared plus a half x. Okay, somebody give me 1 squared plus 2 squared, etc. plus x squared. Sum of a cube. Yeah, x cubed over 6, right? Mm -hmm. No, it's not x cubed over 6. So we x and 6 plus 1, and 6 plus 1 is 6. That is correct. However, <laughs> it's not in the correct form. <laughs> <laughs> you get 2 x cubed over 6, 1 third x cubed. Good, 1 third x cubed. <laughs> <laughs> plus one half x squared plus one six x. <clears throat> okay. X cubed. Well, come on. I think lots of you know, don't you? One quarter you? x to the top yeah. one. It's the square of this top one. So one quarter x to the top one. One quarter. So if we forget the halves, it, the coefficients would be 1, 2, 1. So now we put in a half squared and we get a quarter, a half, a quarter. And then the const, uh, sorry, the, 
the x term now is zero because uh, it's the square of uh, this one. Now I'm uh, so fourth powers. Um, Does anybody know? I think somebody does here. One fifth. One fifth. <laughs> <laughs> More? Well, guess. Look at this. Half. One half. half. <laughs> well, the next one is one third. The next coefficient is zero. That's the coefficient of x squared. And the last coefficient, the coefficient of x, is minus one thirtieth. Um, okay. Uh, what, what is the sum of the zeroth powers? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a great believer in doing. Oh, sorry. <coughs> in starting with zero, even though I didn't. Uh, the answer is that a 1 here, mm -hmm. and it's a 1 times x. Okay, that is the thing I'll call Foul Harbour's triangle. Uh, he certainly worked out what these power sums were out to the 24th one. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, it's a very interesting triangle. Uh, now, I'm wondering whether to reveal the secret. Yes, I'll reveal the secret. It possibly isn't too secret anyway. Um, this number one here, I call B0. Uh, I'm writing it as if it were a power of B, which in a sense it turns out to be. <laughs> um, a half. Uh, oh, but I'm saying it without saying b to the 0, or b to the 1, so I'm just saying b0, b1, b2, b3, b4, and so on. This is a very, very interesting sequence of numbers called uh, as well, I've let the secret out, the Bernoulli numbers. Um, I think, really, Foul Harbor should be credited with, with their discovery. Um, but anyway, uh, these uh, polynomials here, uh, well, roughly, they're the Bernoulli polynomials, except uh, that the name is often applied, well, I'll tell you the what it's often applied for in the public lecture. Okay, they're the fantastic things. Now, uh, many of you, I suspect, or at least some of you, will have worked out the first few of these power sums. Oh, by the way, this, this thing over here, uh, I will call S of, let me just call it S of X, S of X. You know, a typical one of these things. That's the sum of the nth powers of the numbers going all the way up to x. Um, okay. Many of you will have worked out the first few of these, probably, as, as teenagers or something. Uh, and the usual <coughs> way people do it is to guess a pop it, it, you know, to write down the generic polynomial of the appropriate degree and uh, then solve linear equations. You know, you've got a few values, and so you can, as long as you've got n-ish values, you've probably got enough. Uh, and that's okay, but it sort of makes it really hard to proceed at any speed. Uh, now, um, Foul Harbor lived before the age of the calculus. Uh, so essentially doing what I've just described is the way he worked. But when you have the calculus, uh, you can work really rather faster. So 
So let me uh, sort of show you how. Which way do I want to do it? Um, if, uh, if, if we write um, S N, uh, what I'm going to do is to solve uh, for, for this function, S N, um, what we've got to do really is arrange, uh, is to find a function such as S N of X minus S N of x minus 1, uh, we want to, that's, we're trying to solve the equation that this is x to the n. Okay? And moreover, you see, what we're really doing is something that's more familiar for integral equations and differential ones. If, um, uh, this is a difference equation, and we're trying to solve a sum equation. It's analogous to differential equations and integral, or differentiation and integration. But anyway, uh, in order to solve this, uh, we have, sorry, in order to solve the summation problem, we've got to solve this difference problem, and then we've got to put in a particular value. That's the constant of summation. Because if you take any solution of this and add a constant to both sides, it will still be another solution. Okay. Now, if you have a solution and you differentiate it, uh, <coughs> this is the, the bit where I said Fowler Harbor couldn't do this because he lived before the calculus. get? Well, we get n times, we get a solution of n times the n minus 1 equation, the previous equation. And so, uh, what we have to do, let me um, work out, well, I think, I think I'll work out the equation I just wrote down here. which is, roughly speaking, the first one that people seldom know. Um, what we do is to find the solution to the fifth problem here, to, well, sorry, to this problem here, what we do is we multiply this by this equation by n, which is 4 in this case. Okay. We take the previous n minus 1 equation, multiply a solution by n, and then integrate. So let me multiply this solution. The n is this 4. I've now got 1 times x to the 4th here, after I've multiplied this by 4. Then I integrate, and we get 1 fifth x to the 5th. Now I take a half x cubed, multiply by 4, and I get 2x cubed, integrate, and I get twice x to the 4th over 4, uh, which is a half, sorry, x to the 4th. Multiply this by 4, and I get 1 times x squared, integrate, and I get 1 times x cubed over 3. Well, I multiply this by 4 and I integrate it and I couldn't care less because it's going to be 0. Um, OK. Uh, yes. Now, um, uh, I now get a constant here. This is the constant of summation, like the constant of integration. So what is that constant? Well, if I stick x equals 1, any particular value, I can work it out. And when x equals 1, the thing we're doing is uh, it will have uh, the value 1. So 
Um, so here we are. If, if I put x equals 1 in this, I get a fifth plus a half plus a third, which is 6 uh, thirtieths plus 15 thirtieths plus 10 thirtieths. 6 and 15 and 10 is 31 thirtieths. So I've got to subtract a thirtieth. Okay, and now it's very easy. Let's find the first one not on this board. Um, one over six x to the six. Let, let's just demonstrate this. I multiply this by. I'm multiplying this whole line by five, and then I'm integrating. I get x to the fifth integrated is one sixth x to the six. Here, I get five halves x to the fourth, and then I divide that by five. So I get one half x to the fourth, and one th uh, sorry to the fifth. One can see that this half is a constant feature now. Um, here I get five thirds x cubed. So it becomes 5 twelfths x to the fourth. Zero times something. Minus a thirtieth, uh, sorry, that's an equality sign. Minus a thirtieth x multiplied by 5 is minus a sixth x. And then I uh, integrate it and I get minus 1 twelfth. Word. Um, and now what? Sorry, this is a, a two here, very badly written. So let's count how many twelfths we've got. We've got two twelfths, and six twelfths is eight twelfths, and five twelfths is thirteen twelfths, and minus a twelve is one. It's 12 twelfths, which is 1. Ah, so the next number is going to be 0. X. That zero is B5. It is, in fact, true that all the odd Bn, the Bn for n odd, apart from B1, are 0. That's not immediately obvious. I have a neat proof of it, and I might or might not give it in I've not seen that. I've read three or four complete treatments of the Bernoulli numbers, and um, the theorem that the odd ones are zero, apart from B1, uh, I think my proof of it is better than any of them. <laughs> well, not strictly better, sometimes it's equal. <laughs> anyway, these are the Bernoulli numbers. <coughs> And they're very, very interesting things. And this, there are three definitions of the Bernoulli numbers uh, that you can find. Uh, this I call the historical definition. Uh, it really defines rather more than the Bernoulli numbers themselves. But if you uh, look at this, you'll see that the way we worked down a column was always to multiply by a certain fraction. Um, and the numerator and denominator of that fraction increase in tandem. And that means that in the end, the, the result of the thing is, the, you know, is a binomial coefficient. Uh, so the numbers in a given column differ from each other by being multiplied by a binomial, differ from the top one by being multiplied by binomial coefficient. Uh, and uh, we proved that by relating any two consecutive ones. Those relations that relate two consecutive numbers in a column, I call the short relations. And then there's a long relation, which is that in the end, well, I used the form that the sum of all the coefficients is 1. Um, and that I call the long relation. And you can put it in several forms. I want to uh, say that there are actually two different problems one can, two different conventions one can do about this business. 
Um, I've summed from 1 to x. That has been my standard list of x consecutive numbers. But it, in a way, it's slightly more natural to sum from 0 to x minus 1. If you do that, you get essentially the same numbers, except that half here is replaced by minus a half. So I'm going to uh, go down this lift, uh, this column, making the sign of a half ambiguous. And then uh, this is b plus to the one before I did that, and it's b minus to the one. They're two different things, b minus. I call these, I, I was call, once calling these BNs operators. It's not a very satisfactory term. And I, I've decided now that the best way to think of them is the poly numbers. Uh, a poly number is something uh, which is like, uh, it's like a number. You, if you actually feed a number in for the value of x, it gives a number. So a poly number is a function from polynomials to numbers. Um, OK. Uh, so that's what the b's really are. Uh, OK, so that's that. Now, wait a minute. What was I going to say? Uh, if we continue this sequence, I don't think I'll do it just in case I violate uh, Doran's wonderful sacred axiom, I think we should call it. <laughs> if we continue to the 10th powers, uh, sorry. I'll leave this as an exercise for you. Uh, we get 1 over 11 x to the 11 plus or minus 1 over 2 x to the 10 plus 5 over 6 x to the 9. Perhaps I should comment on this column. This number 1 sixth is 2 twelfths. The number one quarter is three twelfths, one third is four twelfths, five twelfths is five twelfths. <laughs> so then we get all the way uh, over to here, which is ten twelfths, which we can write as five sixths. If you like. um, then we get minus x to the five plus, oh, minus x to the seven, I'm sorry, plus x to the seven. Um, uh, sorry, uh, I was determined to confuse these two. Minus x to the 7 plus x to the 5 minus a half x cubed um, uh, plus 566 x. So uh, there is the formula for the sum of the tenth powers of all the numbers up to x. Now, the coefficients in here are really rather simple. Um, they're a bit simpler than the sum of ninth powers that just was before them and so on. So I think that's why Jacob Bernoulli, who was connected with the Bernoulli numbers, although they were really discovered by Fowler Harbour, um, uh, when he found this thing, he immediately started calculating the sum of the tenth powers of the first thousand integers. And, um, and he was really rather proud of the fact that he managed to do that intra semi quadrantum horum, inside half of a quarter of an hour. <laughs> that uh, leads to the question, why did he use that rather peculiar language? Um, well, I've found that uh, that is fairly common in the 18th century. Uh, now, I've been reading uh, Casanova's memoirs of his life recently. It's in 12 volumes, a wonderful thing. Casanova had an, an amazing life, by the way. He, 
he wasn't seducing women all the time. <laughs> he did it all of the time. And I imagine that every now and then he managed it within a half of a quarter of an hour. But <laughs> he doesn't actually boast about that exactly. Um, but um, yes, he uses, Casanova uses this phrase uh, that he did something within half of a quarter of an hour several times. And in volume nine, I found two instances of it in about a dozen pages. I think it's volume nine. There's a standard edition now. Um, it's um, the standard edition is now in six volumes, which are two of Casanova's original volume per volume, if you understand me. I'm referring to the numbers in Casanova's numbering. Um, on page 105, and I think it's 119 of volume 9 of, of those things, um, Casanova uses this phrase a half of a quarter of an hour <laughs> again. So it was obviously a fairly common way of thinking of things. And I have a sort of conjecture as to why which is that you heard some town clock, you know, wherever you were, striking the quarters every now and then. And so, you know, you just think, did I do that in a half the interval between the last two chimes? <laughs> uh, so that's my theory as to why he used the phrase half of a quarter of an hour. Okay. Well, um, I think I'm going to, um, a bit early, but never mind, I think I'm going to see how long I'm going to take to compute the sum of the tenth powers of the first thousand integers. <laughs> um, So what I've got to do is divide this into really six uh, intervals, but I don't need all of this space. Uh, one, two, three, four. Sorry, I'm, I'm not quite sure. Oh, yes. This is the x to the sixth thing. x is a thousand. This is x to the twelfth. I think it's x squared and x before. No, I'm not doing that. This is x to the eighteen. I'm doing x equals a thousand, not x equals a hundred. x to the eighteen, x to the Oh, you're right, I'm sorry, I didn't understand. As uh, my corrector, my keeper, um, X is a thousand, so. Sorry, X to the fourth, X to the five, six. six. <laughs> I shouldn't be that out alone. The eighth, x to the tenth, x to the twelfth. Okay, so I hope I'm not going to make too many of those mistakes. So, um, in between here, we, we have the odd powers of x, and x is a thousand. Um, so, we have one eleven of x to the 11th is the, the first uh, term there. And now I want to remind you of the fact that 0.99 dot 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 recurring forever is equal to 1. And then if we divide that by 11, we, 
we get point 